All right, everybody, welcome in. This is a daily energy read for empaths and spiritual seekers. If you're new here to the channel, welcome in. This is a daily message, Monday through Friday. Um, I help spiritual seekers find and embrace their path. So that's what we're doing on this channel. There will be an extended, if you're part of Pathfinders, that's part of your membership. Uh, if you're not, there's a link in the description box. If this message resonates for you, I will go deeper into that message. All right, so let's see where we go today. What wants to come out for you today? All right, let's see where we go. View from above. Get the big picture. Watching clouds, lie back, rest, and relax. This is a lot about releasing, not trying to do everything for everybody else, which I know a lot of us do. Great adventure, take a risk and venture forward. Um, I like this energy of getting out of the weeds. If you've been feeling like you've got a lot going on and you don't really know the next step, you can't really see what's going on, it might feel a little counterintuitive to take a break. But I feel like that's what's being asked of you in order to get the big picture, get yourself like kind of grounded and feeling um, right side up, okay? And because there's going to be a big um, ask, the universe has a big ask, and that's going to be showing up pretty soon. So let's see what that's about. I saw the Ten of Pentacles here. Three of Wands, there's the expectation of the big ask. Uh, I also see the Three of Pentacles here. This can be about um, people seeking you out, you know, special gifts that are starting to show up for you. You may not know what to do with them, all right? You might not know about your intuition or how to manage that. Uh, some of you may be coming uh, clairaudient, clairvoyant. There's a lot, of, a lot of you on my channel show up um, looking for answers about this spiritual path. Yesterday, I think I did a video about the uh, dark night of the soul or the void. And if some of you are coming out of that into a new level of spiritual awakening, or you are just new to this whole thing, um, I feel like what the universe is saying to you is just like, chill, okay? You don't have to do anything right now. King of Pentacles, wow, beautiful energy. The star... Ace of Pentacles, I love it. Hanged Man, right? You don't have to do anything right now. Ten of Wands, the Temperance energy there. Five of Cups, Queen of Wands, and the Seven of Swords. So there's definitely uh, fire energy here. In the extended, I will look at Aquarius. Um, Taurus, Aquarius and Taurus. Sag. Leo, okay? Aquarius, Taurus, Sag, and Leo. There's special messages for you in this reading. Um, I like this energy of groundedness. Now, this could be someone around you, or this could be your family or your life experience, or this could be something that you are seeking to be grounded in this way. It requires some healing work on your part, and a new beginning is happening. Some of you might have been too connected to material um, experiences. We, when Jupiter was in Capricorn, um, Jupiter's now in Aries, right? It's going in, it's going in retrograde right now. But when Jupiter was in Capricorn, I think that was in 2020, some of you could have gotten really, really tied to materialism or lack thereof. Some of you could have felt really a big lack of materialism. And so it was like moving into this energy of healing uh, instead of being so grounded and so focused on my 3D life, I'm going to really work to expand my spiritual gifts. And I definitely see the universe giving back right now. So it could give back in terms of financial reward that you've decided to um, finally take action on this gift or move yourself into mastery. Some of you might need to take some classes or courses or learn about energy work, or some of you might need some energy healing yourself so that you can start um, delivering on this promise. And I feel like this, okay, so the view from above, get the big picture, very Aquarian energy, right? We're moving into the age of Aquarius, very Aquarian energy. Uh, it's giving you the chance to 
innovate and be um, a leader. And the universe is definitely rewarding that. Ace of Pentacles. Some of you have opened to your gifts, but not come out, right? Like not done it very much publicly. And there has been this sense of, I don't know how to do that. I got too much on my plate right now. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to be in the world in a spiritual way. Well, the answer is, uh, I see a lot of pentacles here. So the answer is, um, and in general, it is about balancing the 3D with the 5D. You can't float around on the 5D forever, and nor can you as an awakened spiritual being solely exist on the physical plane. You're here on the physical plane to learn lessons and heal things and expand into joy. That's what you're here to do. You're here to see the stuff. You're here to see it now, not as a bunch of random shit that happens to you. Okay, that's the very 3D expression of it. And there's winners and losers. And there's, if if you have a piece of pie, that means I get less pie. Uh-uh, that ain't true. You're starting to see that. You're starting to see the abundance of the universe. And you're starting to see, as Abraham Hicks talks about the vortex, and starting to see the um, the quantum level of things, that there is no... There's no time in the quantum. There's, you know, when you when you need something, it appears. And you're starting to get that. You might have even had that experience recently that it's starting to prove its point to you. And the thing is that if you have always believed, I'll only believe it when I see it, you're starting to recognize that uh, I believe it and then I'll see it. Very important distinction. Okay, and it really is going to require you to shift and surrender all of this, whatever this is, taking on other people's pain, taking on other people's nonsense. You know, some of you working in the spiritual world, some of you are in the spiritual field anyway, <laughs> maybe in the spiritual world. Some of you who are tarot readers or astrologers, we really take on the energy of other people. And so you're going to need to work at surrendering that, clearing that for yourself. It's ta it's it's becoming too much of a burden. All right? So balance and transmutation of any negative energies that are showing up in your life is the key to um, allowing this new adventure to begin. Great adventure. You hear that? It's calling your name. It's definitely calling your name. And I feel a little bit like what can be going on for you is there's so much hurt and pain in the world. Five of Cups, Seven of Swords. Um, some of you in the past may have felt that success <coughs> when so many other people in the world are suffering sets you back because... There's this sense that, you know, I'm here to be a healer. How can I be in this expression of healing when so much suffering exists? But I'm going to say to you something I, I did hear Esther Hicks say not too long ago. That Jesus in a super, is, was in a super duper high vibration. He didn't see illness or degradation or pain or suffering. He saw people in their purest nature without all that 3D heaviness. And only by seeing them in their healed state, in their divine state, only by seeing other people in that way, can you actually do the healing work or can you actually be uh, a healer, a teacher, a guide, a mystic, a shaman for real? Because, yes, do you have empathy for other people in their pain and suffering? Yes, but it's not about that. It's not about going into that lower vibration and being there with them because then you for sure can't help them. Um, it's much more about being in this higher vibration and seeing the divinity of other people, seeing them in their heightened state, their 5D imagery. That's what love is. It's seeing someone no matter what nonsense goes on with them or how they're being, right? They can be in these lower states of suffering and lying and cheating and pain and all of that. But your job is not to go down there with them. 
okay? Your job is not to go down there with them. Your job is to stay in this heightened energy. So a lot of teachers and mystics and healers do attract um, what they need, do attract this level of support from the universe. So there can be uh, a flow of energy in terms of money or support or people or new opportunities, blah, 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 all the way out. Because you're in that flow, you're in that space of healing. And I feel like it's almost like a def it's a defiant energy. It's like I am doing what's necessary for me to stay in the flow. Regardless of the fact that you might feel like, oh, I'm not doing enough. If you have the I'm not doing enough earworm going on for you, uh, that's this is the call for you to say that you are doing enough. And some of this needs to be about self-care. You can't, it can't always be going out, okay? It can't always be going out. So I'm gonna clarify a couple cards here. Um, I see these clearly, but I want to know about the Five of Cups and the Seven of Swords. King of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, High Priestess, and the Lover's card. So I am, you know, this isn't really a relationship reading, but there is an opportunity here to um, be in a relationship that is well-rounded, that is built on uh, a seeing of the other person in their full energy, in their full divinity, and not taking on that energy. That's what unconditional love is. You see someone in their full divinity, regardless of what's going on, but you don't take it on. You don't take it in. You don't take that personally. You don't allow that energy to flow in. If their 3D expression is really low vibe, this can be, you know, for a twin flame. I'll, I'm going to do a twin flame reading today, too, uh, for posting later on today. And the twin flame connect collection, or collection, <laughs> the twin flame collective, to me, feels like there's this wobble between um, my 3D expression, my desire of having this person in my life in a 3D way, and how do I do that if there's third-party energy? if there's uh, an expression of toxicity or low vibration? And how do I see someone um, with unconditional love if their 3D expression is loudly low vibe? It's all about you not taking it in and seeing them instead in their pure divinity and embracing that pure divinity and allowing them this is the second part of that. So see people in their pure divinity and allowing them their own path. It's not your job to fix anyone, especially someone who doesn't come to you and ask for help. If someone comes to you and asks for help, then it's about sharing empowering tools so they can do it. You don't do anything. You're holding space, clearing, healing, clarity. Those are the three things we talk about on this channel. And clearing is a way of just seeing how energy moves and giving people a path, giving people a break. But you have to have their permission. Okay? Nobody's really cleared without permission, without their own acquiescence or, uh, yes, I'd like to be cleared. Okay? And if you feel that you can do that for other people without their permission, um, to, in my experience, it just fills right back in, right? So you might be doing that. You might be like, okay, good, I've cleared them. But the next day, boom, 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 it just comes right back in. Um, because they're not shifting anything in their awareness. They're staying in that vibration. So necessarily that has to be attracted back, okay? So this feels to me like there is opportunity for creating some kind of clarity in your relationships and clarity in your work, your life path, not, not even your work, it doesn't have to be your work, it can be a life path that is going to anchor you in a reality that is much, um, much more clear, okay? It's very much like, you know, those winter nights that we have 
that there's, you know, all, you see stars forever and the air is just so cl crystal clear. It could be like, you know, three degrees or 12 degrees outside, like super, so cold that there's just this silence. That's what I get from King of Swords and the star, Aquarian energy. That's February, right? If you have one of those nights, yeah, February in the Northern Hemisphere. There is something about anchoring that clarity so that true love can exist, true experience together can exist. Um, and not taking on someone else's pain or struggle, but holding space for them to do to work it out. Magician. Page of Cups, the World, and the Judgment Card. So if someone has, if you do have this experience where you keep butting into this energy, could be Twin Flame, keep butting into this energy of... Um, someone who goes really low vibe on you, you take it on, you go low vibe, okay? Um, I feel like this is going to be the last hurrah of that, the last roundup of it, because now you're seeing it. You're seeing this pattern, you're seeing the awareness. This person, there might be even an apology coming or kind of like a, a detente where we agree that this is the end of this cycle. I no longer can deal with these three party energies that you bring in. I no longer am there. I'm in much I'm making a decision for myself that I'm in this higher vibration where I don't take on other people's pain that is theirs to work with. Okay. So, Sag, Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, Gemini, Cancer. Going to look at all those in the extended. If this is your reading, there's a link below. Let's keep going and we'll get some advice as to how to work with this. All right. If you're part of Pathfinders, rest of the reading starts right now. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.